Sebastian, how are you? Good, good, Volga. How are you? Very good. Uh, for the benefit of my readers and viewers, I would like to introduce Sebastian as the country manager of Brussels Airlines. He has been in the country for almost three years. Uh, he'll shortly leave for neighboring Rwanda. Uh, Sebastian, almost three years. How did you like Uganda? Uganda is an amazing country. I remember arriving here and being astonished by the hospitality of the people, the niceness of the people. I was also less positively astonished by the amount of traffic on the roads and the traffic jams which we had, but uh, every, every up has a down, as they say in life. In general, Uganda is an amazing country. The hospitality, the welcomeness of people, I, I felt very welcome from the first day I was here, honestly. Yeah. That is already three years ago. <laughs> Time travels fast. That's a, that's a fact. <laughs> but you are in a fast business. When you arrived here, uh, Brussels Airlines flew three times a week to Entebbe. Now Brussels Airlines comes five times a week and is a very established player in the aviation industry. Uh, you have supported Uganda's travel trade uh, time and again. Uh, how did you find working with Ugandans, the travel trade? travel agencies, the corporate businesses? Good question. Very interesting as well, I would, I would say. Uh, from my Brussels Airlines point of view, working with Ugandans is always, uh, has always been quite challenging in, in, in certain ways, but also very fun. Uh, sometimes it took some time to get certain things through, but once people got the hunch of what your ID was, they actually followed you and they, and they appreciated the fact that you put time in learning them certain things. Um, I've been Beside my job as country manager for Brussels Airlines, I've been part of many fora, of which one was the Board of Airline Representatives, where we of course represent the airline's interests globally for, for in Uganda. And we did a lot of hard work there with some negative topics, some positive topics, but always to improve the situation. I must say that Ugandans, once you get their attention in general, they will always look for constructive solutions for both parties. I never had the feeling that people were not willing to find a constructive solution to a certain problem. And uh, if, pe if you teach people something, they really truly appreciate the fact that you teach them and, 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 and they like the fact that you take the time to learn them something about, be it airlines, be it your product, be it whatever. So I really appreciated that as well. Yeah. So you think you're leaving the aviation industry in Uganda a better place than you found it? I hope so. If that does something that, which I might say, uh, for a Brussels Airlines perspective, I'm quite certain that, of course, moving from three to five flights, uh, increasing the business, uh, being a better service provider, which is very important as well. Not only looking at, okay, we sold the ticket and that's that, but looking at the after customer service, looking uh, or, or pu putting the customer in focus during the entire process. Those are some of the things which I focused on in my career in Uganda. Uh, in my job as perhaps the, the, the board of airline represent, uh, airlines representative or chairman here, I think, yes, as well, we move towards a more closely constructive uh, situation or relationship with uh, our, our, our stakeholders, our partners, such as Civil Aviation Authority Uganda, such as the Ministry, such as IATA. And I think, yes, uh, not everything which I've done will probably be positive, but I do hope that I leave a positive legacy, yeah, absolutely. But it's difficult to say that about yourself, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think a lot of people will confirm <laughs> that, you know, if I <laughs> ask them. You don't only do passenger traffic, of course, you, you know, you fly an Airbus A330-200, uh, that has a considerable uplift capacity for cargo as well. And, uh, you, you know, I believe you've made great strides and progress in filling your cargo spaces outbound, uh, you, you know, very well. Completely, totally correct. So, uh, often uh, people think that Brussels Air is purely a passenger uh, airline. And we are primarily a passenger airline. Our primary focus is on transporting passengers, as we call them, guests, from point A uh, to B. Uh, but yes, it is true that also the cargo business in Uganda is and still is very important to us. Uh, we keep on filling our airplanes uh, in the belly, as they say, with plenty of tons of, of perishables, of fish, of, of household goods, removals, etc. And we've always been trying to focus and expanding this business further and further on in Uganda. And uh, truthfully, it, it works very well at this point in time. Even though the competitive situation there as well has become a lot more stringent, uh, we see freighters coming in from a different uh, variety of other airlines, which made all prices go down, as is usually the case. 
but nevertheless, yeah, we continue to strive uh, to get even the belly full. Exactly, true. Brothers Airlines, not you know, looking beyond Uganda for for a moment, uh, now operates 49 aircraft. You'll be getting another A330 next uh, spring, early spring. Uh, to cater for the flights to Mumbai, which uh, gives you uh, four international long haul destinations, three to North America, uh, that is Toronto, and New York year round, Washington during the summer, and you'll be going to Mumbai. Now, Brussels Airlines has invested a lot at Brussels Airport with new lounges. Uh, how have your guests if I may call your passengers so. How have your guests reacted to this uh, vast improvement of services on the ground, either for connecting passengers or for passengers boarding in Brussels coming back to Uganda, or boarding for flights going uh, further international or Europe, inside and outside of Schengen? Right. Uh, good, very good question. Our service on the ground, as you have already explained very, very extensively, have improved drastically. So we continuously, at our, uh, with our partner Brussels Airport, which is of course our main hub, uh, we, we look at opportunities how we can work together and how we can expand the customer experience or, or, or improve the customer experience at the airport. As you stated very well, we improved uh, recently two of our, of our lounges. So we have three in total in Brussels. The third one will be improved. Uh, in the near future, uh, pending of course uh, certain budgets approval. Uh, never, nevertheless, we, 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 we continuously invest and the feedback by clients has been amazing. When I arrived here, Brussels Airport was not yet at the level it is today and passengers see this improvement and that's why we were able to also uh, add additional capacity in this market because passengers learn to appreciate our product more and more on the ground as well. And by that appreciation, passengers actually use Brussels Airlines more often than ever in, ever in the past. And it's the idea, of course, to continue. There was a, a slight hassle uh, this year during the 22nd of March when the unfortunate terrorist attacks happened and the airport was not able to function in a normal climate. But even there, I was so amazed by especially our, our Ugandan passengers who vastly believed and continued to fly Brussels Airlines. They understood that there were some difficulties at the airport, which, by the way, have now totally been erased. The airport is back to its old ways of operation with, of course, an increased security. Much more secure. Much more secure but by using uh, smart tools such as extra cameras, intelligent computer system, etc. And nothing which infringes anymore on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the passenger experience or the customer experience. So I was actually quite amazed how our passengers were, were so nice to us and saying, look, we understand such situations and it's not like we're going to drop Brussels Airlines as my preferred carrier. No, I'm, I'm, I'm continuing flying and, and yeah, that was, it was amazing to see as well. Absolutely. Excellent. Now, Brussels Airlines is already a member of the Lufthansa Group. Correct. Will very soon be uh, owned 100% by Lufthansa. Uh, at least that's a decision the uh, supervisory board of Lufthansa took through Lufthansa. But more important, probably through your membership in Star Alliance, you are able to offer multiple additional destinations in North America. In, in Africa, in Europe, and of course into Asia uh, through partner airlines like United, for instance, like Lufthansa. How has that benefited uh, Brussels Airlines' sales abilities here in Uganda. in Uganda? Also very good question. Of course we benefit a lot. Without our partners, United, Air Canada and the entire Lufthansa group, which consists of airlines such as Lufthansa, Swiss, Austrian uh, and of course Brussels Airlines, uh, we wouldn't have been able to sell as many destinations as we are able to sell today. Today we are able to sell over 50 destinations in the US uh, easily because we have our partner United which connects from the big hubs such as yep. New York, uh, Washington, uh, throughout the US and such as our partner Air Canada is connecting in there up to Toronto towards every part in the Canada and in the US as well. Without our partners we would not be able to offer all destinations or all the products we have to, have to offer today so we have to thank them a lot. Uh, as for your question about Lufthansa, indeed the Lufthansa Supervisory Board has, has uh, clearly shown that they have an intent to buy the remaining 55% of shares of which they have an option in Brussels Airlines. Uh, me personally I think it's a very, a very good idea for them to buy and it will be even contributing more to our company as Brussels Airlines in the future. Uh, 
it is known that in the European aviation industry we have to consolidate to further grow the network and the opportunities and to have the economies of scale. And it's clear that that is what Lufthansa's intentions are with Brussels Airlines. They further want to build further on our Belgian brand. They want to further build on and increase full our service airlines airline brand. brand. Full service, well, to be seen. But uh, yeah. yeah, that is uh, that is one of the of the ideas which would be there. Yeah, exactly. The details are not yet known, and that is something which is of course discussed on a, on a okay. higher level. But I'm sure that Lufthansa has a very positive and bright outlook for us in uh, in, in, in in store for sure. Yeah. And of course, Lufthansa and United Airlines have attached their own flight numbers under a co-chair arrangement exactly. on Brussels Airlines flights from Brussels to Entebbe and Kigali. Exactly, so currently from our five flights a week we have out of uh, Entebbe to Brussels, we run co-chairs for Air Canada, for United, for Lufthansa uh, and for Hainan Airlines as well, uh, the, the our Chinese partner or Chinese partner airline which flies from Brussels to Shanghai and Brussels to Beijing. So absolutely, without our partners and without using their force, uh, we would never be as strong as we are today. Uh, finding good friends in the industry to be able to, glow your, to grow your global network and global brand is very important, absolutely. Yeah. So Uganda has broadly embraced Brussels Airlines, which of course, let me look back a little. Sabina, the good old days, uh, Sabina used to fly uninterrupted. Uh, from Brussels to Entebbe and apart from that one year uh, switchover period when Sabina had gone and SN Brussels was born and then it became Brussels Airlines, uh, you have been offering uninterrupted services from the European capital to Entebbe uh, for 30, 40 years now? Something like that, absolutely. Which shows the strongness in our brand. Uh, we carry still a lot of legacy from Sabina and even though that company unfortunately went bankrupt, uh, we still and we were the people who started uh, and continued the, the legacy and we invented SN or we created SN Brussels Airlines, which later uh, developed to, to, to Brussels Airlines. And it's true, we have been one of the carriers who is flying to Entebbe for the longest period of time. We never pulled out, even when the political climate was less stable, even when there were some problems, we never went away. Uh, yes, we sometimes reduced frequencies and then we increased them again, but this is logically depending to what the economy or what, what, the, opportunities are, yeah, what the opportunities are at that point in time. Uh, it doesn't make sense to fly an airplane if you fly it empty, of course. It's not good for the environment, neither is it good for business. But uh, now we are back here with five flights, never stopped after 40 years. I think we should be very proud of ourselves, absolutely. And to answer your questions, have the Ugandans embraced Brussels Airlines? I believe yes. I believe most of the Ugandans, or our travelers, are now very aware of Brussels Airlines and they appreciate who we are, absolutely. And of course, the quality of in-flight service. You are the first international airline to bring a premium economy class called economy privilege uh, into the market with better catering uh, in, in uh, a cabin just adjoining the economy cabin and your uh, business class cabin of course uh, is ranked as one of the best in the market uh, in part because of your king seats exactly. which are spread generously throughout the C class cabin but I think what people very much appreciate is the range of in-flight entertainment and of course the catering which reminds me of Savoir Vivre mm -hmm. which uh, Sabina of course had as a slogan. Uh, what is your feedback from your guests when they return? Do they let you know how they enjoyed their flights? Do they let you know how they enjoyed the in-flight entertainment, the meals, the I can say that from my own experience, the excellent service by your crews, whether it's in front or in economy. Uh, what feedback do you have from your guests? There is a, there is a variety of feedback, but I'm, I'm again very proud and happy to state that most of the feedback, of course, is very positive. As you said, our product is renowned or very known, especially our business class product, as we, have the, we are the only airline here who actually has a certain first class, which is our business class, yeah. which I'd like to call it... Uh, you know, we have the single seat, uh, which you call very well a king seat, where uh, someone does not have a neighbor, somebody wants to travel in all tranquility, uh, getting ready for meetings or, or visiting whoever. 
the next day they have a single seat only dedicated to them which goes full flat which turns into a bed with excellent service food created by belgian michelin star chefs in business class uh, which we cater on board both from brussels to entebbe and from entebbe to brussels uh, the feedback on that is amazing and positive. Uh, we go the extra smile, as we say. Like you say, our cabin crew also likes to go the extra smile. The passengers, the guests, are the first priority we have from start to end. And that I don't only mean the flight, I mean every single service surrounding uh, the flight, from buying your ticket to actually landing, getting your luggage, and perhaps if you have a concern afterwards, to solving that concern. So that is really something we see now um, by getting feedback from our passengers. They are very happy. As you stated as well, the economy uh, class cabin has recently got an upgrade uh, where, we in, where we introduced our economy privilege uh, cabin, uh, where people have extra leg room, where people get uh, an, an, an upgraded meal experience, where uh, champagne, have, champagne, of course, don't forget the champagne, very, <laughs> very interesting, uh, where people get the battery in flight entertainment with more uh, movies, etc. And this is now available on all of our flights to and from Africa and to and from North Atlantic and will also be available on new flights from Mumbai, exactly. Uh, and also there we have a lot of positive feedback. Uh, we didn't expect uh, it, this product to be launched so successfully and even on our route, this is a very successful product and we are very happy that, uh, that our passengers and our guests appreciate what, what we are doing. And it's the first one. Yeah, exactly, in, in this exactly, exactly. Yeah, there are some other airlines who, who also tried, and we're still doing it, I think, even in Entebbe. But yeah, it's the first one of its kind, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even the regular economy passengers, yeah. I call them regular economy guests, it is a tremendous experience. Our food, again, is, is always been renowned for its quality. We have a brand new in flight entertainment system with, uh, with, with a lot of, of, of entertainment on their movies, movies and games. Uh, we often get passengers who just pass by the office again and to just say, wow, I was amazed, I didn't know because this was such a good product and I'm so happy. And it's always lovely to hear those people's opinion, of course, it makes you have a good day, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm sure your colleagues flying the aircraft, working in the cabin will be very pleased to hear that. How about your team here in Uganda? How many staff do you actually have here at Brussels Airlines? In the office, here, in town? and of course at the airport. Yes, uh, it's a very good question uh, as well. Uh, currently we employ 14 uh, staff in Uganda, uh, which might look like a small number, but you have to know that we of course logically also have good partners in, uh, in Uganda who help us. Uh, we have a ground handler called Enhas, which is in Tebe Handling Services, uh, who help us uh, they perform sure checking functions and things like that. Functions, handling of the aircraft, making sure the baggage is offloaded, yeah. making sure the security around the airplane is, uh, is watertight. Uh, so on top of, of their services which we use on a daily basis, we have 14 own uh, staff here in Uganda. Uh, varying from sales staff to financial staff to operational staff to security staff. So it's a very, very uh, differentiated uh, way uh, or differentiated uh, line of jobs, let's say. Uh, most of them work in our town office um, and, then there, and then we have about six who work at the, at the airport who are uh, always at the airport making sure coordinating everything is, uh, is yeah. running fine there, making sure that all guests are properly handled, if there is a concern that they will be helped etc. etc. Yeah. I'm sure your staff, as will many of your guests, as will many of your friends you've made over the last almost three years, will be very sad to see you go. Uh, you're moving to Kigali. In Kigali you have six flights because one uh, actually operates Brussels, Kigali, Bujumbura. And you have the five which route from Brussels via Entebbe to Kigali and back to Brussels. Uh, more scope? More challenges? Who knows? I'm not there yet, but I guess. <laughs> well. What I can tell you, the feedback I've had from the Brussels Airlines staff and from travel agencies, I've uh, had quick chats about this short interview. Uh, everyone will be very sorry to see you go because you have made an impact, you have made a lot of friends and please remember that Uganda is always ready and welcome to see you back. So as we say in Kiswahili, Sebastian, Kwaheri Yakunana. I wish you the very best in your future assignment in Kigali. And by all means, it's just a half hour check flight. Exactly. So do come back once in a while to play golf or just to interact or 
join us for the Belgian night. Thank you very much for your time and once again, uh, how does one say in French? Goodbye? Au revoir. Au revoir, indeed. Thank you. That will be it for today.